Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. This is episode 335. This week, we're going to talk about some Hero Clicks design insight. We're going to talk about some tournaments that, that we're in. And as always, oh baby, we're going to talk about what made us happy this week. I'm your sexy ranch and co host, Calderness. Howdy, howdy, let's get rowdy. <laughs> Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and seal products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. And they got that beautiful, sweet 35% sell in bonus. So if you're doing some Hero Clicks closet cleaning and you know, you're getting rid of some older Hero Clicks, sell to those bad boys in bulk 25 cents for a su- an old, like super rare, an old LE figure. That's like the best thing. Because old LE figures don't hold value super great on the secondary markets. Like $0.25 cents for an LE figure in bulk is pretty hot. Uh, cool Stuffing does not buy uh, figures without cards, though, just so you know. And yeah, so sell to Cool Stuff Inc. They also pay you PayPal. When they do PayPal, it's uh, friends and family. Because they, they already have the product in hand. You do have to pay for your own shipping, just like when you sell it to anywhere. But uh, I got in a few Facebook discussions about selling to Cool Stuff Inc. And having sold to both main hero clicks websites the experience is easier and more fun uh with coolstuffinc.com anyways that is my spiel as always i am joined in the studio by simeon bruce what's going on simeon oh you know i listen to this and this isn't cut out i'm getting a new co-host <laughs> next week i <laughs> anyways let's start with what made us happy this week? Pretending that didn't happen. What didn't happen? Nothing. I don't know what you're talking about. What made you happy this week, my man? Uh, this week, what made me happy was the best holiday of all the holidays, uh, including all major corporate ones that are celebrated Beautiful. entirely by Beautiful. purchasing things from stores. And that is Halloween. Halloween happened. And uh, through a tiny little Halloween party... Uh, mostly by myself, but there were some people that were there that may or may not have been real. There was a rabbi, some cowboys, a deer at some point, and uh, me. So it was a pretty good turnout, I will say. Um, it was pretty fun. Just enjoyed, uh, you know, getting spooky with the music and. You went all as. That stuff. Uh, no, no, no. Evil. Costume. Evil uh, Chucky, the, oh. the, what is it, overalls doll. Are you, are you old Chucky or are you um, robot doll no, new I was, Chucky? I was not E.T. glowing finger Chucky from the new <laughs> movies. Not at all. Uh, I was old school, uh, like very first appearance Chucky. I didn't have that many scars on my face, so I wasn't like Bride of Chucky where one eyeball's like popped out and he's like all stitched up and stapled together and stuff. I was like freshly risen from the grave, Chucky. Yeah. Um, that's me happy this week, Halloween party. I dig it. It's also kind of the same thing that made me happy this week. I went out uh, with a friend. We went to something called Shivers and Quivers. It was like a at a bow and arrow ex- expo thing. Bow and arrow, uh, what do you call it? Like shooting range, I guess. Shot bows and arrows. They did uh they did uh archery tag as well, but it was like phone tipped ones. You've never seen so many corona adults running around shooting each other with bows. It's pretty great. It was pretty fun. Sounds um I learned how fine. how terrible I am at archery. By the way, by the way, um I'm bad at archery. I I, I slapped myself in the forearm about a million times with that stupid bowstring. Oh yeah. Um yeah. Did I gain any respect for bow hunters? None whatsoever. I still think you need to stop talking about it. It's not that cool. No one is impressed that you cover yourself in deer pee and, you know, walk around and try to get within 100 yards of a deer. It's like, anyways, um, when you live in the, when you live in the north to Midwest area of America, um, I'm not going to get into it anyway, but I was Rambo as my Halloween costume, which is fitting, you know, like Rambo three, it's got the bow and arrow. Oh, yeah, welcome to Stop. Mortal Kombat. 
Oh yeah, I see. I thought that was so crazy that I was Rambo, and then literally like just today was it announced that he's in Mortal Kombat 11? I think it might have been if, yesterday, but yeah, very. Was it yesterday? Me. Okay, like either way, I was like, "Are you serious?" I am almost at the point where I need to buy Mortal Kombat 11. I think it's Ninja Turtles, Terminator, Rambo. If they would have actually added Ash, I would have 100 bought it. But Mortal Kombat games. Sorry for the off tangent hero clicks here, guys. They are so awful. I hate their gameplay. It's very stiff and hard to control for me because I'm used to Street Fighter, which is a lot more fluid and easier to control. Other people are like, dude, there's literally no difference. To me, there's a difference. Like how uh, Injustice League is this gross, disgusting, stiff and hard to control fighting game. I, I don't I don't have, care for Injustice. They have like set combos. And so if you don't it's learn set combos the combos, versus, then yeah. yeah. Then yeah, it's just like yeah, I'm not about like that. a couple punches that ends in like an awkward kind of way, but exactly. Um, and then after that, uh, me and the friend we went to axe throwing at a bar. It was really cool. I found out I got really good at it when they went to the bathroom. As soon as they came back, I was like, I can't throw this axe anymore. I I'm just dinking it off the wall each time, and it was killing me. Although I did slaughter them in like axe tic tac toe, so it was great. Uh, had a good night on actual Halloween. Uh, went to uh, Sioux Falls and everything with the family, hung out, you know, had to go eat at Spooky Olive Garden, all that stuff. So Ooh. just enjoying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I went to Spooky Buffalo Wild Wings and Spooky Olive Garden to celebrate Halloween this year. So just enjoying all the Halloween festivities was awesome. So anyways, that was seven minutes of the podcast that people are like, what amazing non Heroclix related discussion, you guys. We really appreciate that. And I would say you're welcome, people at home. You're welcome. So, Simeon, do you want to talk about all this cool new stuff that's happening this week? Nope, because we're going to talk about all the stupid, I shouldn't call them stupid, all the insane amount of Heroclix online tournaments that are happening and the ones <laughs> that we are a part of. Yeah, there's so many to choose from They're not currently. Stupid. They, are, they actually aren't stupid. I really shouldn't have said that. I, I like the ideas of both of these tournaments. I don't know why I said that. Um, it, Just there because are a the lot, sheer though. volume makes it feel like it's the volume, a stupid, yeah. like a stupid amount stupid of things, amount. but not stupid yes, in a bad you. way. Yeah. Yeah. Saved you. Good there. save. Good save. Um, Adam, <laughs> Adam, uh, chippy, whatever your name is, uh, Dur- Mamu, like you guys are great. Yeah. Yeah. Keep yeah. doing the tournament. Brian, I mean, you want to talk about the first tournament you got us signed up for here. Yeah. So I'm going to talk about the gong guy two V two tournament. So this is already happening. Um, I had my first game, uh, as the, the Gong Guy boys do, of course, uh, being hosted by the Eagle cast, which is uh, Brian Gong Guy and Chip Gong Guy, the brothers Gong Guy, I think. Oh, of course. What right. they go by. Um, Believe. They're hosting it. It's and in typical fashion, as their tournaments tend to do, they're doing a pod setup for the i guess what you would call like the normal swiss rounds so people get paired off into pods and then the top two teams oh, i should mention that uh the top two teams advance out of the pods so pods are typically four teams and so two teams won't make it out of the pod uh but you still get to play three games each person so the t- 2v2 is a version of almost like it's like a team constructed thing I'd say it's team yes. constructed because uh, you're basically sharing uh, the same pool of hero clicks with your team members. So it's uh, what do they call it? Extreme Highlander is what they called it. Extreme. And yeah. Uh, yeah, extreme with two X's. So it's extreme Highlander means uh, not only can your own force only use one of each character and. Uh, like set number character. So you can use like multiple Wolverines as long as they don't share a set number, that kind of thing. Not only can your own force only use one of each figure, your, uh, your partner's force can also only use one figure. So it's like the same pool of figures that you're choosing from. So if I chose like, uh, like vulture, like the prime vulture for my team, that would mean that Calder could no longer pick that. And that works with all game elements and maps. So we can't share any maps. We can't share the uh, only modern legal resource, which is Galactus. Um, can't share any colossal retaliators, any generated items, any uh, equipments, things like that. So it's a pretty cool setup. It really limits what people are able to play, especially if one team member really wants to play like 
a lot of random stuff. It kind of limits what the other people are able to do. Um, so just to quickly, I guess that was basically all about the setup for this tournament, right? 2v2. So it's teams playing against teams. Me and Calder on a team. Team uh, Luther's, what did we go with? Luther's 40 Kex Tour. Uh, Kex Tour, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the Kex Tour. Uh, so we're on a team. That means that I could not share any of Calder's figures. He couldn't share any of mine. And we couldn't share any maps. Um, we got placed in a pod with Mr. Chip Barnett and, uh, Mr. Brian, uh, Dormammu, as Calder says. Uh, we also are in the same pod as Brad Broyles, and I can't remember off the top of my head what his partner's name is. Is it Creighton? David, David Creighton, I yes. believe? Yes, and it is. And then, uh, I think there's some other... Some other group of punks in our in our pod that uh, I'm not super worried about. I think that I'll. I mean, I could probably beat both uh, yeah. of them, but I'll only get to play one. I think uh, it's George Masu. Is that how you pronounce it? Uh, yeah, Masu. You have to really emphasize. Is it, the is it is George George? George Masu. Is that it? Yeah. So I'll probably George destroy Mas- yeah. whoever that is. Uh, won't have yeah. to worry about. I'm a, the I'm up the against. Tournament. Um, how do you say it again? Um, Patty, Patty, yep, you poke, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll Patty, yeah, Patty, yeah, Pajaka. Yeah, uh, yeah, she yeah. seems like a really, she seems like a really cool gal, <laughs> Patty. So I think, I think we'll have a fun game. Yeah, I don't, I'm not too worried about that team. Uh, it seems like, yeah, you know, definitely no one stacked the deck against anybody with that team. Uh, seems like a no, no, steamroll kind of. Pretty low guys. level hero clicks players, I'd say. Yeah, uh, I'm not super worried. So no. if I ever figure out who they are, you know, uh, yeah, then I'll be worried. But uh, yeah, yeah. The person, the person you're playing against seems to. I think they have like a really interesting like choking kink. Is that is that what they're about? <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, you mean George Masu? George, uh, yeah. <laughs> perhaps I don't know. I think. Yeah, uh, I think they really like getting choked or something weird like that. <laughs> uh perhaps by a uh, thunderbolt lad um a certain yeah but i pro- i played my first game so before we get into the games let's uh go ahead and talk about our teams uh, that's the pod that we're going to be in if we manage to have the highest or second or first highest win and loss record between me and calder as well as points we will advance on into the single elimination um i think there's uh, I want to say seven pods in total, and I want to say 32 teams total, which equals out to 64 players total, which is pretty cool. Um, but to get into my team, uh, I decided to go with a ruler theme team, and I was playing around with doing some uh, Witch Queen LaFay stuff because I really like Witch Queen, and then I decided halfway into building Witch Queen uh, with Galactus because I was like, well, which Queen's one big thing that sucks about her is that she can be outwitted really easily. So I decided to build Witch Queen um, with Galactus. And then once I was getting into that and I realized there's just a lot better rulers out there than Witch Queen, I decided to go with the Borg Queen. I don't think she gets enough love. And so I built with the Borg Queen, uh, Jason Wingard is that guy's name. Uh, so Borg Queen, Jason Wingard, the ABPI co- uh, uncommon Medusa, uh, who can spit out the hair pogs, and then just some filler stuff, which was 10-point Gorilla Grodd, 10-point Proteus, and the 25-point Magneto. So just very filler. Um, they have like a reason to be there, but not as important as the other three. So the biggest thing is... Um, Borg Queen can bring back KO'd opposing characters uh, to your team. And you get, like, the full character. It's not like they're back for a turn. You just you get that character, like, as is. So you just get it pulled out of their KO area and placed on your team. And the way you do that is with plot points. She's a title character, so you have to rack up enough plot points to match their point value 
divided by 10 plus 1. So if their point value is 100, then you need 10 plot points plus 1, you need 11. Uh, which is kind of a pipe dream. That's not something that can really happen. But what can happen is like KOing a Wendigo and having two plot points and then having a full-powered Wendigo. Well, not full-powered, but a fully functional Wendigo on your team with only two plot points. It's pretty fun. Uh, four plot points for most retaliators. Tri-Sentinel, uh, the Cosmic uh, Dark Phoenix, um, also 30 points, so you need four plot points for those ones. It's a interesting idea. And then the same thing is uh, the Borg team ability allows her to heal whenever a friendly character is KO'd next to adjacent friendly character is KO'd. So I can just pop off the Medusa Pogs and just KO it because it costs nothing and it's a free action to generate it and heal her. Uh, it's a D6 roll minus two, so I can technically heal her up to four every time I do that, and it's fun, it's interesting, uh, it's worth doing. And then Jason is just all around pretty solid, pretty good play. Uh, there's not a lot of stuff that he can't do well other than survive a big hit. So uh, that was my team. Um, I was playing. I was also playing on the Latveria village map to get all the peasant bystanders because I can also push those to death and heal uh, the board queen. But uh, Calder, let's let's get into your team. What are you, what are you playing? Uh, my team should come as no surprise for a lot of people. I've been playing uh, Scrolls seventy six soldiers uh, for two months ish now. I've been playing it a lot, and I really enjoy this team because uh, I love the soldier keyword. So I got Spider Man seventeen seventy six at fifty points, uh, Super Scroll at fifty points, Josiah X at fifty points. Captain Marvel, 95 points. Marvella and Mary Jane Watson. And then I have the Corvus Glaive and Soul Gem on my team for objects, as well as I'm paying five points for the Stark Tower map bonus. I don't know if I've ever went into the strategy of this team. I played a version with it where it was like three Super Scrolls uh, and Josiah X. And then most recently I played a version, and this is probably the best version I think I've come up with. And it's the uh, with Captain Marvel on the team two super scrolls um no josiah x possessed her with galactus uh but simian is using galactus and i have actually no problem not playing him because that allows me to have mary jane and marvella on the team so basically josiah x uh stops penetrating damage so everybody on this team has a reducer so if you want to do crazy ping damage to me you need to outwit us uh, if you want to do it to the super scroll you have to outwit both his impervious and his toughness super scroll just has very good stability with the three rollouts and since you can't deal penetrating damage i will get all three rollouts unless of course you have outwit so that is awesome josiah x himself uh is going to be assigned the stark tower if i win it i have a plus six to theme so hopefully right i'll get assigned the stark tower map bonus getting a crimson sage pog is huge getting a what's his face again bolt bolt is awesome yeah, i've pulled some crazy stuff with uh, yeah hypersonic precision strike like one time i made him and i'm like let's just go for it i've done a lot of throwaway attacks with bolt that have landed getting rid of a phoenix right away in some games getting rid of a mr oz right away in some games is huge like bolt bolt is great i freaking love bolt especially uh, making it appear halfway across the map is awesome tank tank is okay if i can get him first turn and he can steal depending on where they place it uh, a heavy equipment object which is kind of cool um he can't charge into it he can move into it sure uh so that's neat so there is a lot of really cool stuff that you can pull off with that map bonus and josiah x kind of sitting in the back just wanting to stay safe um from harm's way since it's his special damage power that is giving us the protected from pen damage so josiah x has something to do um, in some practices, once he gets hit, it really sucks. So that's why I'm going to equip him with Corvus's Glaive, mostly for the once per game regen, because that might just be all I need to get him back up to there, which is very helpful. Um, Super Scroll chooses a ton of powers. He is he's a great mini toolbox in and of his own right. Captain Marvel, um, I really didn't want to put her on the team, but I think she 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 has a lot of benefits, and especially in Highlander right now, without having a ton of Super Scrolls for rollouts and survivability. She is a great pick, and I'm giving her the uh, Soul Gem 
potentially heal up off stop clicks and everything because I think she's great and I think that helps out a lot. The ping damage is huge. Um, like this team does not like pulse wave, obviously. So like t- being able to um, throw her out there and take care of a tri sentinel plus the hypersonic reach just gives me a lot of reach in the team that I need. Cause if I want to have reach with super scroll, I give up a lot of defense and I would rather be full defense than full reach, you know? So that's huge. Obviously Mary Jane is just good. And Marvella is barrier who is also just solid. Um, so yeah, that is the team. I've played it a lot, so I'm really comfortable with it. So I really, uh, I'm really excited. I haven't played any of my games yet, but I'm really excited to play them. The sideline, though, we got a little bit of a problem on the sideline. There might have been a bit of a communication error because um, we got a certain trouble alert here that I would never put on a team. Like I would rather, uh, like you know, be forced to do extreme rules all over again, but like in 20 minutes and make everything. Like I would rather eat. The Rocky Road ice cream, the tacos, the beer, the the creamers in 20 minutes than ever list Superman on my build sheet. But it seems that has happened, um, Simeon. So that's weird. Once once again, uh, not a fan. Yeah, yeah, really weird. Um, but Lex Luthor is at least on there. Uh, Black Vulcan is at <laughs> least on there. Like, I mean, I, I stole some pretty good call-ins from you, but uh, uh, Superman being on the sheet really irks me. Because unless it is Thursday Throwdown, you will never, ever, ever see me play a Clark Kent ever in my mm. life. But um, or if I'm honestly not even going to load his image. You noticing. It's, uh... Or Simeon puts it on my build sheet without me noticing. Uh, you didn't send the build sheet to me before you sent it in, by the way. Nope, so nope, let's not, not say without me noticing. <laughs> but uh, yeah, just kind of yes. threw it on there. I gave you my sideline picks and someone kind of blatantly ignored them. But that is my team. I like it a lot. Um, I love the soldier keyword, so just want to have some fun. In it. You guys know what I'm saying. But the, the whole Superman being on there, I, I guarantee I will not even load him into the Roll20 game. Um, yeah, it's not going to happen. So that, that is the Gongai tournament that we are in. Simeon, what is, what's the big big grand prize for Gongai here? Uh, so they haven't gotten all the prizing like fully fleshed out. But I believe for the top two mm. teams, which means uh, four players in total... They will all get a good old hundred dollar Galactus boy, the big old laser blasting, head swapping, three by six dial wielding Galactus boy. So, uh, pretty decent prizing. Um, sponsored by Gongai Games, of course, yep. of the uh, Brian and Chip mm. Gongai brother fame. Um, yeah, it's. Of course, of it's, course. Uh, I like it. I like this tournament because it is a restricted format without restricting, without truly restricting anything. It is still like a restricted format, and uh, I really like that because you can't just play multiples of the best thing. Uh, but like your teammate can play some of the best things, and you can play some of the best things. You just can't double up on all the best things, and uh, that's pretty cool. Um, and I think, go ahead. Yeah, keep going. Well, just where we are right now in the, I'm going to say the M word, guys. I know we're a casual show, but in the uh, meta, uh, the competitive environment we are in right now, you can have a lot of teams without anything overlapping. And they're still really good, solid teams. And I, for sure, especially since it's only two people, as opposed to how The Rock does it, they do three man teams. So I think, especially with, where competitive is at right now it's you know we're seeing a lot of the same team functionality but as far as pieces go it is fairly diverse no one is just playing the one good thing you know so that's really cool and it was i think i think tournaments like this really uh, work you don't have to own any of the figures so it wasn't like a like you could have played right you know like uh q prime uh, Ultra Chase Thanos, like you could have had all of that stuff on a team, and I'm sure there's at least one of them out there where someone might have done something like that. Uh, but yeah, it's it's refreshing. It's uh, cool to see like some of the teams. Some of the teams are like standard things I've been expecting, but uh, it's it's fun to see what people have to work with when maybe some of the figures that make their casual their typical teams work, I guess, are taken by like their mm-hmm. uh, partner so yeah it's just kind of a fun 
idea and uh, appreciate this one. This one's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. All right. The other tournament we are in is brought to us by uh, Adam and the whole Clicksing It crew. Uh, if you haven't checked out their podcast, it's really good casual here who's podcast. Um, but theirs is the Sets Appeal tournament where they have chosen, uh, is it five or six Golden Age sets? Can't remember off the top of my head. Five, yeah. And you have to build, it's, okay, five. And it's Highlander out of those sets. It is a single person tournament. So it is also single elimination. So you have to build every team for each set before you start. And we're going to have to just get through all these games in the next week. So the first set we're building out of, and this is Highlander, just so you guys know. So you can't be like, ah, there is one good thing on the set. If I spam it a bunch, let's just play it. Can't really do that. So first set is Web of Spider-Man. And I like building out of old Golden Age sets. I think it's fun. You also don't have to own any of these pictures. Uh, big ups to Brad Boyles, the Brad Cash show, making um, Rule 20 images for all these for. Old. The entire yeah. set of each of these sets that are ancient old sets and that probably no one will even in this tournament use half of the ones from each set. Yeah. But he's making them all anyways. So Yeah, there's a lot of And he like he made one for Cosmic just not going to be played <laughs> he, at all. He straight up made one for Cosmic Spider-Man who physically cannot be played points. in this tournament. Uh, I didn't even yeah, notice. Yeah, 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 I didn't even I know. That. I didn't That is hilarious. But yeah, like big ups for for putting in all that work so people can have something cool to look at. Um, and so go into what you built for Amazing Spider-Man or Web of Spider-Man. There are others like there's Avengers. The top two uh, next after Spider-Man, sorry, is Slosh, I believe. Yes. So round after two, that, it's Crisis. It's, uh, what is single this? What is the uh, round single two elimination? Is Superman Legion of Superheroes. Round three is Crisis. Yes. Round four is Avengers. And then the finals match okay. will be building out of, ooh, what a delicious set. Star Trek Tactics. 300 points ugh, each, which means ugh. your Star Trek Tactics team is probably two ships, maybe three, if you really stretched it. Uh, most of those ships, at least 75 points, and there's a lot of 100 to 150 point ships in that set, so um, I imagine a lot of teams of just whatever, but uh, it's fun seeing if people, like if our if our typical crowd of people that enter tournaments can handle these old kind of harder to play figures that lose a lot of momentum as soon as they get tapped for a little damage. Um, but my first team, uh, the team that I have currently for web of Spider-Man is going to be. So since we did, uh, our Thursday throwdown stuff, I, I know a little something about this set now. Uh, there's a lot of figures that I would have liked to play, but the figure that I knew I needed to have on my team is the Super Air Groot. I think the Super Air Groot has a lot of really good stuff top dial. Uh, no move and attack, but he's got a lot of stayability with all the ways he can heal. He's got a pretty good top dial. And then he's got a really awesome mid dial. And I'm hoping that my opponent might not be able to get him knocked past that mid dial. And I might get stuck there. And that'll be pretty good if that's the case. Um, also, I went with the uh, the LE Night Nurse from that set. And so she is the one that can uh, use support. And then when she does, after action or after support resolves, you get to increase the targeted character's defense by plus one. And... That's just like a static thing. You don't have to actually hit with support. You don't actually have to heal with it or anything. It's just after resolutions, you increase defense by plus one, which I think is pretty solid. She's also got willpower in a set that's severely lacking willpower, so that's pretty great. Um, the other big figure in that set, uh, or in this team, I should say, is number 032. I didn't actually play this one, but... Uh, good friend of the show Devin Adams had built with this figure and I was like ah that is a really solid figure to have on the team so that's the uncommon vector who I believe is the only figure in the set that has TK uh, and it's not just TK it's opposing characters within three squares may be moved with telekinesis as if they were friendly so you don't have to roll an attack within three squares and when they're moved this way they are dealt one damage after the action resolves which is cool because it gets through 
uh, anyone that doesn't have damage reducers, so you can just deal that damage straight to them. And then I rounded out this team with, originally I went with uh, another sort of like free damage dealing person, uh, which was like Vermin. But then I decided to swap it out for a longer dial figure, and that's the Uncommon Black Cat, who has stealth top dial uh, combined with combat reflexes, which is actually one of the few times they did it right back then, rather than giving her energy shield. She's got combat reflexes stealth, and then she's got... Uh, Black Cat can use probability control, but she can only use it during an opponent's turn. She can use it on each opponent's turn, which doesn't really make a difference. It's just one opponent that I'm playing against. She also has the Spider-Man family team ability, so that 17 defense that she has top dial will be able to be swapped out with Groot's 18 or possibly 19 towards the end of his dial. Um, and then I just I just really wanted a prob on my team, even though it's only going to be able to mess with my opponent's uh, stuff. I just thought it would be a really good figure to have a prob with, and uh, having a really solid defense, and she is a 10 for 3 top dial, so it's not like she won't be able mm. to help me out with attacks. Um, and then the, the main thing is, again, you know, getting Groot, staying either top dial or in those like special mid dial clicks where he's like a 13 for six. Uh, I just really need a way yeah. to do that. So night nurse is my main way of doing that. I'd rather not regen with him if I can help it, but uh, having, having vector who's also a 10 for two uh, black cat, who's a 10 for three, uh, no real range on this team, but in the one game that I practiced, there was just so much stealth that I think range might not be a real big thing that I want anyhow. Uh, there's a lot of like 12 range, 10 range, 12 range, you know, 8 range, all these really good people that can shoot stuff, but uh, there's so much stealth that I'd rather just be able to punch people up close kind of thing. Okay. Right on. An important thing to note, I guess we didn't say this, but all the teams are going to be 300 points across the tournament and we can only use maps that were in that set. And there's only one map for web of Spider-Man and that is the bridge. So it's water on both sides with four pieces of elevated as like, like four by four chunks next to the starting area. And the starting area itself is four squares by four squares. So it actually goes forward uh, more than your average starting area, which is really interesting. Yeah. Um, so also yeah, and then there's some hindering spatter day. Not consistent. and he also heals in water. So yeah. Yes, which is good. So just so you guys know, and that that makes the feet frog legs like somewhat good, like better than normal for sure. Um, and so they would also get like plus one defense if they were in the uh, the water itself. So which is cool. So frog legs, baby. My team. Uh, I also kind of went, I didn't want to play Nightcrawler. I just, uh, I just don't want to. It's the first figure people think in that set. And I love Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler is my favorite X-Men, but just like, I don't want to be that guy. So I'm playing Novar as my main like centerpiece of the team. He has a trait, which is traitor to all. As you reveal your force, you may choose that Novar loses all keywords this game. If you do modify his attack value plus one this game, which is awesome. So top dial instead of an 11, he's going to have a 12 attack which means all those nines bottom of the dial become tens and the one eight becomes a nine, which is just really, really solid. Uh, Novar also has running shot with eight range, invulnerability, 18 defense. He has no indom or willpower, which is rough, but um, he's really good as an attacker, especially when, when he has running shot for the first three clicks. He has a special attack power, which is transforming gauntlet gun. He can use energy explosion, penetrating psychic blast, and pulse wave. So with the eight range, I've got a 13 square reach right away without using any perplexes. With a 12 attack for three damage, which is just really solid to potentially get maybe a full team pulse wave, single target pulse wave, ignoring stealth and everything, which is huge, or a really good energy explosion off only one bolt, you know, so I can't, you know, do some double targeting energy explosion stuff. Or once again, a really good pen sigh off if I don't need the pulse wave. So I like uh, the mini toolbox that Novar is on his last two clicks. He also has regen, which is huge. He also has some hypersonic speed after he loses uh, running shot. 
So there's only three clicks of his dial when he doesn't have movement attack, and two of those clicks he can heal. So I'm pretty okay with him being like the main fighter on my team at 141 points. Let's go into some of my uh, support here. Uh, J. Jonah Jameson is just a 26 point perplex, pretty much. Like, that's it. He also has a trait when characters with Ethan, Line of Fire, can't use the Spider Man team ability, which can be pretty good if they're using it to copy something pretty big. You know, I can at least get rid of it, which is nice. Yeah. I am also using Vector. He's flight. He has TK. He has leadership. He has all that good stuff that Simeon was talking about. Vector can actually remove tokens off everybody on the team except for Novar, which is really cool. So I, I really like that for Vector. Uh, next up on my team, I have Toxin. I think he's just a really good secondary attacker. He has shape change, super senses, plasticity, as well as charge and super strength top dial. Uh, and he has four range, which is cool. So I think he's just really solid tie up. I mean, he has shape change plus his, his whole dial as part of his damage power. And he has super senses for three clicks as well as some poison mixed in there. So I really like Toxin just for really good tie up because, you know, he can charge for four damage, 10 attack like that's solid, you know, with super strength. And then I have frog legs thrown on Novar since Novar just has the boot symbol. And that way he'll at least be able to ignore some terrain on the map since he can't ignore the hindering or the elevated. So I, I really like this team a lot. I think it's going to be fun. And if I lose out first round, I lose out first round. It's, it's, uh, you know, tournaments are about having fun and playing, having a good time, stretching your creative team building muscle. So that is uh, the tournaments that we are in. Let's go ahead and jump into some of the news that came out this week. Simeon, 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 House of X is getting dreadfully close you want to you want to go into it a little bit yeah it's you want to talk about the not not don't, the design insight but just don't care the uh, new stuff we've learned oh not the design insight article not the design insight yeah let's uh, talk it's, about it's coming how out they posted uh, the december 1st is that like the release date they said yeah so we saw the token pack we saw the fast forces cards oh yeah yeah sure um we're going to the light stuff, the box art and the maps. So um, I don't really care for this token pack, to be honest with you. Uh, the backs of the tokens are all the bystanders that can be generated via the Krakoan revival, which means you'll be buying this token pack to hand to your opponent when you play them. Or if your opponent is playing a Krakoan revival, I guess you can use these bystanders yourself, but, um, I imagine that it's more likely that you'll be using the Krakoan Revival trait if you buy the pack. So you'll be like handing out these tokens like, yes, here you go. This is worth 10 points for you. And also mm. you get this cool like bystander. Um, not a huge fan of the token pack. Just not just because the bystanders uh, just I just don't care for the colors and stuff. I also I can be super picky with my tokens now because I have so many yeah right on uh, i got nothing to say about the token pack it's just another token pack that i'm going to be skipping what i think is you know we're going to talk about the box art later so let's not get into it now what i think is interesting is the maps so we went from a through p on the top side and then one through 24 on the side side whatever lateral side i don't know and that's the way it was for like the longest time. So after they got rid of the whole maps that have no printed anything terrain, you just made it up as you went along. So then like there was a while where they made the maps that have the A through P, the one through 24. So you could play Battleship a little bit if you lined it up correctly. And that's how I used to play Skype games when before like the cool fancy ways of rule 20 that you kids get to have and that's play Skype like us. Um, you know, this makes it way easier. But then in like 2015 or 2016, they started making maps without the ABCD and then the one through 24. At least they made a few maps without them anyways. Like I know ADW had maps without it. And then a few other sets had maps without it, which was really annoying because it was just inconsistent. And then we got maps that had like the skirmish rules on them. And now we have maps that have in every single square, the number and letter that would correspond to the square, which this would have been golden in the old school Skype days when the number and letter was like what you used to like tell where they were on the map. So now there's a big A, B, C, D, F, G, whatever, and there's the big numbers on the sides and the top of the map. 
But now in every single square of the map, it'll have, you know, J12, B7, whatever. It'll have those numbers in each square. It makes the map look a little busy, looks a little full. But I think overall, I'm cool with it. I would have been like cooler with it if it was back when we played Skype. Nowadays, so much, if there are people who are playing over Skype and Zoom and haven't moved on to Rule 20, and this is the way they prefer to play it, then these maps are perfect for them. So I think it's pretty cool. I think it's neat. It does make it look busy, but I can't say I hate it. Um, what I do think is weird is that both maps, although having different names, are 100% reprints of older maps, which kind of brings up the question that we may have to ask this coming Tuesday of like, what do you guys think of map reprinting? You know, like how right. the ROC was making a snow version of the hedge maze, et cetera, et cetera. Like, what do you think of just this is an old golden age map. We brought it back a few years later. It's the exact same map, but it has a different name and somewhat of a different style. Um, I'm not going to say Arthur's Castle <laughs> slash Arthur's other castle world castle looks exactly looks the same. The exact me. same. Yeah. yeah. And I do not miss playing on this map. It was cool thematically, but man, if your opponent was like prepared for this map and you weren't, you just got hosed. Um, yeah. It's a really cool the map. The other map to like combine yeah, with like yeah. another and then have like an actual castle in the middle and like two drawbridges on either side though. Uh, the the other one's yeah. Krakoa. It's got the big old face in the middle it is. on the island with yeah. all the vegetation. Um, I actually really like this map. It's not quite symmetrical, but it's basically symmetrical uh, where it counts. Um, and then it's yeah, it's got the big creepy face in the middle. And I actually have no idea what this map is a reprint of the Krakoa Island. If there was like an older Krakoa, maybe I guess. But yep, there was. I don't know what this map is a reprint of. There was okay. Yeah. So yeah, actually, that is what yeah, that is a reprint of. Old map. Um, I guess I didn't mention the Dyson tokens are like a neon, like bio green, green like a biohazard black. green with black. Um, the kitty pride <laughs> has hold fast tattooed on her knuckles and she's got like I don't a know eye. what she looks that like. means I yeah I she's kept up with like the dude. comics but it looks like Kitty Pride is a straight up G in these tokens yeah, right now it's hilarious looks like prison G Kitty Pride or something and then yeah. the rest of the X-Men just look pretty standard um it's the new Xavier and the new Magneto but otherwise Emma Frost Jean Grey Storm all look pretty standard um, for us, yeah. And then, yeah, the, the Fast Forces are... It's uh, Clea, is that right? No, Sage, sorry. Sage, Wolverine, Sage. Domino, Beast, Marvel Girl, and Forge. Um, yes. And, so, and yeah. it looks like potentially we're, we may get a team-up card in the Fast Forces. Yeah, for Beast. Like. secondary cards. Although the card they have there for Beast has the main set symbol, so it's hard to tell. Um, it's hard to tell if that'll actually be like a secondary card in the booster, or if for some reason they put a team-up card with his Fast Forces card. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, we did get the dials. We did get the, um, the cards for that in this article. Um, but yeah, that's that's about it for that one. Yeah. Um, that is about it. So Simeon Beast is unique. Now, now we can... Yes. Interesting. But uh, he's so good he needs to be unique. Whatever he does. Mutant CIA. Something, 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 something. Anyways, Simeon, you want to go ahead and tell us about the design insights? Since we were so rudely well, Locked I was. Out. I know you weren't because you were part of the inner circle. You were yes. able to check out the last design insight. I wasn't. The common That's man true. was locked out of the last design insight. But now they have a design insight that everyone can see. And this is about the return I <laughs> team up cards in the same year. I guess they're returning. I mean, you skipped two sets, sure, but I don't know if I yeah, call it a return. The, so, the mean, tell, us, return tell us about after the so return of the years. team up card. So uh, there's not. There's, there's, all right, really quickly, side tangent. There's only one return, baby, and it's not of the king. It's not of the Jedi. It's return of the team up card. That was for you. Uh, all right, so now. now yeah, this, this Design Insight article is uh, about team-up cards. So it says, we're excited 
and that's x comma cited or no x dash cited uh that team of cards are making their de- debut in marvel hero clicks there are tons of great x-men stories and marvel's mightiest mutants flow in and out of different teams so yep that's true uh I'm not going to read the whole thing. We kind of already know what team up cards do and how they work. It essentially makes your team a Highlander team. You cannot have more than one character of the same name if you're using these team up cards. As many characters on your team as you want can use team up cards. Uh, they just have to have the corresponding characters on their cards to get the benefits. Um, so in this set, there's only going to be. I think it's about cut in half. I think there's only going to be 60 team-up cards as opposed to the 120 that was in Justice League Unlimited. And so that's kind of good news, unless they decide to cut down how often they appear in Bricks. It was like three or four, uh, I think maybe three to five, depending on the Brick. But um, if it ends up being only like one per Brick, that's not great. But uh, if it maintains it'll be a lot easier to collect all of these than the previous ones uh do you want to do a deep dive into what they say adding surprise delight and value to like your boosters is surprise delight and value baby yeah it's uh, what they, yeah let's get into it it's what they've already told us with the justice league ones uh if you've seen a handful of team up cards when you open your booster it's likely to be the one you haven't seen before it puts the player into because... the creative driver's seat in a fresh way. The collectible value can't mm. be ignored. Team-up cards in general are easy enough to acquire. It... Are they? I mean, it is easy to acquire. <sighs> are they, though? Uh, I wouldn't say team-up cards in general are easy to acquire, uh, but they. it is easy to acquire one or two or a couple of them, yeah. Uh, but any given team-up card may be challenging to track down. We don't anticipate most players will want a full roster of all team-up cards, unless you're Chad Birdsall, in a set, but many players will enjoy trying to trade for their favorites. In particular, we suspect that beginners will be able to trade these to more experienced players for figures that might help them build their Heroclix collection, including staples for their teams, which is true. Uh... Uh, the Justice League ones did end up going for a pretty penny, so there was actually several team-ups that you could pull in a random booster and then trade for like an actual like super rare or something, depending on the card and the figure. Uh, recontextualizing is another source of value. By that, we mean that players will be forced to rethink figures they've seen before, likely ones in their collection, By providing team-up cards that name popular characters like Namor, Cyclops, Storm, and Wolverine, we hope that players will get a fun and interesting opportunity to reconsider those characters. I've never once considered playing a Namor, Cyclops, Storm, or Wolverine. Uh, They never make it to my team, but now they might, now that I have a team-up card that forces me to do it. Uh, It says, instead of trying to find the best piece for a certain role, support, ranged attacker, etc., players will search for a well-balanced core group of characters and fill out the remainder of their teams as appropriate. However, if Storm is listed on your team-up card, she probably makes it onto your team before a character that fills a similar role. Without the team-up card, she might not. Speaking of Storm, she's just one of the X-Men that Cyclops Mm. worked with on the X-Men Outback team. Storm also is known to have a romance with Forge, so check out his team-up card below that features Storm as well. And then uh, they give us two figure previews. So this is the Uncommon Psylocke. Number 23.01 is this team-up card. So 23 in the set, she's an Uncommon. She comes in at 50 points. Um, Just her standard dial is traded mutant cia which is similar to the other spy trade kind of like traits we've seen this the is stealth. espionage trait yeah. uh stealth with improved not espionage i'm sorry and targeting so um yeah mutant cia she gets to move through hindering see through hindering has stealth which is great um as like just like a basic trait she also has a really cool trait that we'll we'll see how long it lasts. Uh, it's traded blades cause fangs, and then when Psylocke hits with a close attack after resolutions, she can use mind control at no cost, which would be pretty pretty okay. 
and that's all. It would just be pretty okay had Wiz Kids not made a boo boo and uh, released a character that could be targeted by friendly mind control a couple sets back. But they did, so going on into her dial. For 50 points, you get six clicks long dial. It's three clicks of charge with 988 and no printed attack power, but she does have that traded blades. And so she's got her attack values are 11, 11, then three clicks of 10, and then a click of a nine attack. She has three damage for her first three clicks and then two damage for her last three, swapping on her first three clicks between uh, empower and then going to three clicks of enhancement, which I kind of prefer it the other way, but uh, it's fine. She's a close attacker, so it makes sense that it works that way. Uh, she has willpower on her first click with no indom. Uh, so, of course, willpower on her first click and then her last two clicks. And then clicks two through four, she has combat reflexes with uh, 18 willpower first click. And then the three clicks of combat reflexes are 17s. And then clicks five and six are 17 and 16 without the combat reflexes. So I think mid dial is where this chick really shines uh the stealth combat reflexes blades charge all that is really good not having to slow when going through hindering she does have four range she has the x-men team ability so she's got some stuff going on there um the big thing with this lady is that due to the fact that they left it open-ended on her... When she hits with a close attack after resolutions, she can use mind control at no cost. Uh, they didn't specify if mind controlled had to be close or range, and they just left it up with at no cost after resolutions at no cost, which is a similar mistake they've made multiple times with other figures. If you combine the Psylocke with the Chase Jean Grey, who can be mind controlled by a friendly... Um, and you give that Jean Grey a way to have the flight symbol with, like, Beetle Pod, Goblin Guider, uh, I don't know, all the other Space Gem, all the things that give you the ability to carry a character. Basically, you can turn Psylocke and Jean Grey into a perpetual motion clicks figure where they just constantly Psylocke attacks with a close attack using Mind Control, because Mind Control can be a close attack. And then Jean moves carrying Psylocke attacks as part of the mind control Psylocke rinses and repeats does another close attack mind control um, since they left it open-ended it can just be abused in that way and so we'll see how long she stays as is but uh, on the surface just uh, without that whole trait mess up I think she's worth 50 points I think she's a pretty solid figure Okay, right on, dude. Um, I understood. I understood like some of that. I'm glad you explained it to me. Um, I certainly did not see the potential there. I don't normally look into it that much. So we're gonna talk about my boy, my boy Forge. It's been a long time since we got a Forge, and we're getting two in this set, which is really cool. Maybe more. Who knows? The Fast Forces Forge is not much to talk about, but I do like this main set Forge, especially since. Uh, he's got all the keywords I want to see a Forge have. X-Factor, X-Force, X-Men, Mystical, Scientist, and Soldier. And, uh, of course, with some of those keywords, he'll also have a Spider-Man family. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So let's go into his normal dial really quickly. It is espionage that is a Captain America trait. I was right. I just shouldn't have second-guessed myself. But he has the mutant CIA version of it, which is stealth. Uh, ignores hindering for movement and line of fire. X-Men team ability, he is... 60 points, 6 range, no special combat symbols, sidestep with pen blast right away, 17 toughness, 3 damage, special damage power, damage power throughout his entire dial. Uh, later on in his dial, when he loses sidestep pen blast, he switches to a different pink and dark blue power, which is plasticity and precision strike, which is kind of funny. Um, his sculpt is pretty bland. Like I know they're sort of trying to hype up sculpts with this set, but I mean... It's like he's got a little bit of metal thigh going on, and then he's just hand on a hip, hand holding a gun, but he's not even shooting it. It's it's a oh, waiting for the bust pose. Just like giving him like a screwdriver and had him like holding the gun and using the screwdriver on like the the little phaser thing that he's holding. It would have been like ah yes, that's his power making things like mechanical. You know, at least stuff. something because like that's what he does. Yeah. You know, he's the you smart no scientist. Idea what he does you know, from this sculpt? Yeah. 
he's just chilling, you know, got the bandana, which is cool. He's got the sweet boots with the tassels, which I always dig. Like he got his costume, right? But it mean like, come on guys, as far as action goes, it ain't there. His special damage power is technopath perplex. When he uses it to target another character that shares two plus keywords, he may modify the chosen combat value, except damage plus two instead. So we have a plus two perplex for 60 points. I wish he was 50 or a little less for this since he only has toughness to defend himself. I mean, especially but, since, um, like Valeria has a plus two perplex for people that share right, keywords. Right, and she's for 40, 40 points. points. She only has to share, share one keyword. Like, yeah. why is Forge... Up pick powers. <sighs> um, yeah. Lots of different... Like, I mean, yeah. Mm. It's, it's a huge bummer they, as a they, Forge fan. 20 points is for that X-Men team ability they gave him. Uh, I would hate if they really think X-Men is worth that much more than Fantastic Four. Um, and a few more, and like one more click of life, but... Either way, although it is a bummer, uh, I can't wait to you know put him on teams where he'll share the keyword soldier and Spider-Man family because I ain't playing no Forge, no X-Men. I do not care about you mutant losers. But so wait, he's Connor. definitely going to be on a soldier team team. We forgot to oh, add right. surprise, delight, and value to these figures. You're right. You're right. So the let's, beautiful surprise. Let's go back to, to Psylocke, who on the X-Men Outback team up, you can team her up with Colossus, Dazzler, Gateway, Havoc, Jubilee, Longshot, Rogue, Storm, and Wolverine. Any of those listed figures. If plus three of them, so it's three or more of those listed figures, are on the map, Psylocke and the listed friendly characters can use Close Combat Expert. Uh, after revealing forces, you may replace characters' cards with the team-up cards. So it's all that same stuff. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Giving an entire team close combat experts pretty cool. Um, hopefully we get a new gateway because otherwise the last one was Xavier School, which is rotated. I um, I gotta say, this pretty much confirms it, right? Because every character that I was listed on Shining so. Knight's card was in the set, so yeah. there's no reason he shouldn't um, be in this one. It's also, it's going to be one of those things where I'm almost positive that Colossus is going to have close combat experts somewhere on his dial. Uh, but giving oh, it baby. to Wolverine isn't bad. Giving it to Havoc, who's kind of like a ranged person. Dazzler, who's kind of a ranged person. Yeah, Gateway, long shot, Jubilee. Probably shouldn't be making attacks. Uh, this probably isn't a team of card that I'm going to need. Um, but it's, I mean, that it is what it is. It's uh, as in surprise, delight, and value to this figure. <gasps> Surprise, delight, and value, bro. Those are my favorite words, man. Surprise, yeah. delight, value. value. I like surprises. I prefer I the like value. value. Menu when I have was, a, uh, the dollar I got a menu, whole. But... I like how you said the value menu. We got a sh we got a segment called the value corner, and you went to the value menu, Simeon. I'm talking about get McDonald's. Your, it used to be the dollar head menu, out of and then they had to Jeez. change it because it's no longer a dollar. With the McDonald's the rant menu. in the middle of the show. Yes. I don't spawn. I'm not. I'm not. I, a, I do not like McDonald's, but I like them even less I, now that there's not things you can get for a dollar, other than like right. drinks and chicken nuggets. Ugh. Chicken nuggies. Actually, the chicken nuggets are a little more expensive than a dollar. Burger King has like the buck forty nine chicken. No, this is here on this podcast. Yes. Goodness gracious. Anyways, on next forges. Rules, how many Surprise. chicken nuggets can Calder eat before he vomits? You know what you don't know is that I was a McDonald's boy growing up and I would get like two 20 pieces and I could clean those bad boys up. Now, to be fair, it is quite literally pink goo with fry, fried, yeah. fried net, whatever around it. There's not a lot of Skin, chicken in those. I can't call yeah. it that. Um, you know, it's mush and you, you would dip it in their, their chemical ranch. You know, it did not feel, taste like real ranch. It just felt like plastic McDonald's cream ranch, whatever it is. Um, and then you would you would you would swallow you would inhale those bad boys you could you could go through mm. those twenty pretty quickly them fries um, though I, would I want to do it again no uh, the, dude the fries are so good no here's the thing about it's McDonald's, the, the only that, redeeming thing about hey, that place we're a hero clicks podcast let's stop can we stop speaking of uh, redeeming <laughs> cool. qualities let's add surprise delight and value to Forge <laughs> Calder to Forge he's got to team up with Storm get both Forge and listen from the carriage on the map. After revealing forces, they can use enhancement, but only to modify one another. Now, this is not uh, great. It's surprising that it's so bad. I don't know how much value this adds. Now, I mean, this makes more sense than close combat expert because I assume both Forge and Storm are more range based. Both range based. So yeah. Forge 
four, we'll have a four damage Pensai, you know, 11 attack, which makes him really solid. We assume Stork, Storm ugh, can fly and they can carry and work well together. So I, I do like this team up. It's not crazy amazing, but giving two people enhancement, sadly, to only target each other is still pretty good, you know? I mean, and at that I point, do you even like, need to give them enhancement, though? You could have just said... Uh, they can increase their damage. Like when adjacent, they can increase their damage plus one for range sure. attacks because it's an yeah. enhancement that does not trigger off of anyone else. Uh, and you can't play, I believe, with team up cards. You can't play like multiple storms, even if they have different set but numbers. Keep... Right. So like, but to keep the wording down, I suppose enhancement is about the best way to go. And I do like these traits. I like the whole um, my girlfriend trait, like, you know, Guy Gardner and Ice or like, you know, Captain America and Sharon Carter, where they have like the my significant other type trait. Yeah. And for characters that have had multiple partners in comic books, like, I mean, that happens just all the time. I think team up cards are the best way to do that. You know, so that way, you know, there was like a Deadpool or a uh, Siren or whoever who had like a trait that'd be like my brother, my boyfriend, <laughs> my uh uncles or like whatever and you're like oh we're just throwing these all in one trait and instead um you can just play the one team up card which is cool so i think this is probably the best way to make traits like that and i do like the team up card mechanic for specifically the kind of significant other style traits that we've gotten in the past so i think this is cool i think this is fine you know it's simple keeping it simple yeah. um is there anything else you want to talk about in this article Definitely they have value quite um, a bit <clears throat> yeah i'll more, go through uh, the rest uh, of it real quick uh, opportunity you, costs instead of point costs. The key value proposition of team of cards is that if you constrain your team building, you'll get benefits that other players won't have access to. Even when you have the same figure in the past, we've put abilities onto characters that might only work when they're on themed teams. We think theme up car or team up cards are better for a few reasons. Reason one, when the ability can be very valuable, we might need to include it in the point cost, making the figure less desirable when you're unable to capitalize on the special power or trait. Uh, two, if the ability is complicated or wordy, it makes the figure look more challenging to use for beginners, even when it might be simple when you're not using that ability. Three, when the constraint, when the constraint of the ability is extreme, it doesn't belong on a low rarity figure, it would be bad experience for a player to open a common figure that has the ability they can't utilize because they haven't collected many figures yet. By the time the, those players have collected a higher rarity item, they're more likely to already own most, if not all, of the figures required to utilize it. And four, if the rarity of the figure is high, players expect us to make the figure easy to put on any team since it was already challenging to collect. I don't really agree with any of these, to be honest. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like they want to be like they're they're making an attempt, and they're almost correct. They they're almost getting it right, but um, I don't really want to break it down too much. I just think that these break I think down, that the team ups uh, are like we know what they are. Um, they're additional like powers that these characters have. I, I kind of think that they're adding to the point value with what some of the team ups offer you. I also don't think they're adding enough to the team ups to actually make them worth playing an actual like full team up build. Like no one's going to play seven soldiers theme uh, with that team up over like just a solid cosmic team or whatever. Um, it's not going to be like that much better. Like just forge as an example, giving two characters enhancement where they can only use it to modify one another is not going to make me need to play that team up and those two characters or even want to do that as opposed to maybe a different forge team up that lets him work with like, you know, Cyclops and Nightcrawler and like some characters that might be better than just him and storm. Um, I think that there's an effort there that they're definitely like trying to figure out how this game works and how people think about this game. But I think they kind of missed the mark on it just a little bit. 
and I don't want to harp on it too much because I don't want to go point by point. So I'll just continue. I mean, if we keep talking negative about team up cards, we got a couple of wrestlers that are going to be just, oh, they're going to Kali yeah. Ma rip our hearts out if we keep bashing team up cards. Team up cards so we got living it. independently of the primary character card solves all of these issues. It also lets us modulate force construction with a tool besides point values. It lets us add a ton of variety and variety they do add. Uh, consider Marvel Girl upgrading all of X-Force when paired with plus or two plus mem members of the team is good, but so is limiting opposing characters when she's paired with two plus members of X-Men Red. You'll be able to build substantially different teams around some of your favorite characters and their dials. Uh, and then we get a Marvel Girl. I'm not going to go into her dial. She's a typical ah. uh, TK running shot Marvel Girl lady with flight. Uh, her Hates the up, color red for yeah. some reason, but that's it. Her team up is uh, Gambit, Namor, Nightcrawler, Storm, Trinary, and Wolverine. Uh, if you have two plus listed of those characters, opposing characters who can use Flurry, Blades, Claws, Flangs, Blades, Claws, Fangs, Super Fences, or Ranged Combat Expert can't modify a combat value positively by more than plus or by more than one. Um, so if they have Ranged Combat Expert, they can't, you know do anything other than plus one attack and damage they can't put both into attack or both into damage which is fine uh the super senses one is interesting just kind of like weakens teams that have a lot of perplex uh she's 80 points so i don't feel like you're playing her just for this team up i don't think that uh stat modifiers are going to be like reeled in because of marvel girls team up but yeah then we'll continue the newest round of team ups uh, are crunchier. <laughs> it's like what? the uh, Taco Bell Grande Supreme. That would, is that what they meant to say? I hope so. I hope the team up cards literally crunch in your hands. Uh, the last what time we did team up cards, it was for 120 cards. This time it will be for be uh, blah, blah, be about half as many. Even at 60 team-up cards, that's nearly an entire set's worth of new character cards. You may be wondering why so many, or why fewer. Why so many? The high volume of team-up cards encourages unexpected teams and hopefully increases metagame diversity. So far, we've seen some teams that have substantially different feel for the person playing them than for other teams in the meta. That's a huge victory for the Heroclix community. I don't think I've seen any team ups on other than like maybe a Mezo. I don't think I've seen a single team up card used competitively, but that's just me. Yeah, I, mean, but I haven't really been playing. Besides a Mezo, there aren't that many competitive teams. I don't think I can't name a single one that I've seen competitively besides a Mezo. And even then, people don't like a Mezo because that deletes their sideline. And yeah, most of the time, I'm not saying everybody, but most of the time, you'd rather have trouble alerts or troublemakers than a Mezo. So like. Yeah, there's a no. Lot of, uh, I don't know what tournaments you guys are paying attention to, but they, I, I'm, they're not. I'm sure I've missed a few teams out. that like worked with. Oh, totally. Stuff, sure. But, uh, again, like one of the best things about JLU is being able to run multiple Doctor Fates and get like those pluses to your uh, action total, and you can't do that with team up cards. So it's weird that they really like really nerfed them before they even released them. Uh, why fewer? This round of team-up cards is more ambitious than the first. Uh, the effects mm. are more nuanced, less like one another, and in plenty of cases, more powerful. At the same time, many are more restrictive. Some may be less powerful for the figures you're using, but combo with a figure that already exists. Some of these combos are more obvious than others. So I like that. I'd really like to see more of what they've done. Um, and so far, the team-ups that we've seen... They aren't the static, like, super senses, shape change, uh, super strength, like that kind of thing, which is good. I'm glad that they did get away from that. Uh, that was kind of a, annoying that it was like, yeah, in that episode they teamed up, but they didn't, like, it's not like Superman taught the Flash how to pick up heavy objects, you know. Um, and then to finish out this article... We've maintained what inspired team-up cards. Beyond what we've discussed above, keeping sealed exciting, great storytelling, and positive impacts to local clicks communities were things that we loved and are confident will remain true in this second round of team-up cards. 
our fingers are crossed that as we hear from players and retailers about the team up cards, there will be benefits we hadn't thought of yet. Uh, for uh, let's see, for all of the latest coverage of House of X, keep up with us on social media and yada yada yada, Twitter, Facebook, Discord, uh, Instagram. Follow WizKids. But yeah, that finishes out that article. Um, yeah, I think it's you know. They gave us three previews, and I think that was the biggest takeaway. Uh, yeah, these... pretty much. They just talked about team-up cards again, and it's like, we know what they do. Yeah, we you know, know what they I don't do. want to hard bottom anymore. I've, I've said enough. It's cool that they dropped care. it down to 60, and I do appreciate they're going that. to be potentially making them uh, more unique per team-up card. So like, not every Marvel Girl team-up card is just going to give friendly characters TK or Flight or mind control or whatever you know um that's neat and i hope that they if they continue doing these that's how they continue doing it spend extra time figuring out like what that like couple or team would actually give to each other like what that person would bring to the team and then make that the team up that's cool please do that instead of what you did in justice league because 120 variations of the same powers was kind of lame yeah and most pretty much unused so yeah so that's cool that's team up cards i don't have anything else to say on it i'm still not buying any of this set so let's let's get into community tuesday shall we there are dozens of us dozens community tuesday's question when it comes to hero clicks box would you rather see figures on the box or just comic art this comes hot off the heels of seeing for like the first time in a while the box art for house of x has only one figure and it's the phoenix wolverine who we knew about on the back thanks to the solicit but on the sides it does tell us what teams we're getting in the set but it doesn't promote any of the stuff that's in the set it doesn't say anything about the new sculpts and why the set is more expensive it doesn't say anything about team up cards and it doesn't say anything about potential team boosters which doesn't make any sense to me yeah um yeah we didn't mention also on so the what back do you of the think box about is, uh uh dark phoenix old man wolverine I literally just so, said that i literally just said that i said uh, phoenix yeah. wolverine bro what are you talking about i literally just said that bro bro uh, i thought you said uh i didn't say dark phoenix or old man but i did say wolverine oh, okay. phoenix well, something were, so like an expensive wolverine figure simian yes yeah well, half wrong or half right, depending yeah, on how you look at wrong. it. You know, glass, That's how glass <laughs> half full. Okay, okay, all right, all yeah, right, yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, yeah the, right. uh, I don't know. They've just got, what is it, just comic art? Uh, other than the back, it's just, it's just comic, comic art, art on the front yeah. and sides. Um, I think it's cool as long as, you know, as long as uh, going forwards, if they're, like, going to keep doing this, they make sure the figures that they have like pictured are in the set. And also it'd be cool if they did like, I think we've already discussed kind of like our takes on how they should do box art, but I really appreciate when the boxes like two boosters side by side are like a one congruent image rather than just the same image repeated. Um, I really like the box uh, like style where it like makes like a bigger picture the more boxes you have next to each other right okay sorry i will take one thing back it does say it has the featuring team up cards on the front i did not pull that up right away and i apologize for that i don't want any false news spreading but it doesn't make any sense to me especially when they are raising the price and let's say you don't follow whiz kids on social media like a lot of people do because you're boring um, they're not going to know about the price increase. It's going to hit them when they try to pre-order from their store or when they go in to buy boosters. They're going to be like, what? A price increase? But why? And the box doesn't tell you why. And you would think with a set and with the articles they're posting about how nice and cool the new miniatures are going to be, slap. that they would make that. A, newer, larger, you would slap that all over detail. Box. Yeah. Exactly. Big gold letters, newer, but larger I, sculpts with more detail. Yeah. You know? But instead... We have nothing, like none of that. It makes me think maybe it's because the miniatures aren't that much better and they are still super lame that you don't want to advertise that because guess what? They aren't that much better and they're still super lame. Mm. So 
are you just being like hey look we're gonna hike up the price but like you know they're not really that cool yet to to make them you know like a a selling point you know what i'm saying but we'll still charge you more trust me we'll still charge you more we'll make a little article saying why we will with some figures that are not that great looking um i don't want to harp on whiz kids like that much about this and a lot of people bring up the fact that like by the time most of us people that are on the social media, the social media is like my grandpa, geez, but who are, you know, pay attention to figures that when they get released, when they get spoiled, we already know pretty much all of the sculpts and all the dials. So we really don't need to know. So what the point is, if we already know all of that, why, why isn't the b- box just like plain black or like white with a big X on it and just be right. like, you know, like yeah, fear yeah. itself, well, you know, because, like that defense doesn't make yeah. much sense to I me. I think, um, and we'll get into like the comments here in a section, but uh, I think that they really need to ride a fine line between having like a box that's pleasant to look at and cool to like look at, looks interesting, is like eye catching, and also tell you like tell the layperson who may not play Hero Clicks at all exactly what's going to be in that box, or you know like I mean clearly they'll be able to tell it's like a blind booster pack. Um, whatever, and we'll see if like anyone actually picks up Hero Clicks just randomly now that they're going to be like fifteen dollars a pack. But um, yeah, it'll be interesting, and like I think that the reason why they have to kind of make it eye catching and yet also should describe exactly what's in the box is because you know, like when I started out, I literally was just like. I went up to a Flash booster box and was like, what is this? Tiny, like, sculptures of the Flash. And the guy was like, yeah, it's a game. It comes like these pre-painted miniatures. And I was like, ah, you had me at pre-painted. I do not like to paint, and uh, yes. that's pretty cool. So, um, yeah, if they put, like, a big splash, more detail, uh, like, larger sculpts, more detail, you know, whatever. Like, size increase by 20%. Uh they might get more people that grab them that aren't like in the groups. Uh, if you're already following like hero clicks enough to listen to podcasts and watch YouTube videos and stuff like that, chances are that you'll have a pretty decent idea of what all is going to be in the set by the time you can actually pick it up. So you're not really like the target audience for what they should put on the box art, mm-hmm. unless you really like collecting boxes. And in that case, they just need to make it look really cool but maybe some sort of happy medium i mean the art, the art they chose was cool you know and what you said is he's pretty much hitting the nail on the head like they they should market like the cool things that are in the set and i don't get why they aren't so enough harping about it i said my piece you said your piece uh let's go ahead i'll read let's do three i'll read the first one over on twitter And that is Cody saying, I do like the current comic art on the front, figures on the side and back, but if I had to choose, I prefer figures. I just like seeing what's in the set without having to look it up. I only really look at dials online, so Sealed was where I would see most of the sculpts for the first time. Yeah, fair enough. Which Uh, is cool. And I I prefer seeing that stuff for the first time. Prior to doing like this podcast and quote-unquote being uh, on the inner circle, um... I didn't really care to know the figures before sealed. Uh, since I never played sealed competitively, I really liked to go in blind and be surprised and be like, Oh wow, they made that. Or like, I mean, sometimes it'd be pleasantly surprised. And sometimes I'd be like, sweet. I pulled two reptiles and a hazmat. Who is this? And why is it in this Marvel set? Who, why? Um, but I'll go with, uh, on Facebook, Alec, Alex Morse says, I think a mixture is fine. You definitely need to have some of the set themes, preferably showcasing some of the cooler figures, though. It's true, most active players know what's in the set, but it helps new casual and returning collectors know what they're possibly getting without having to look everything up. And at the end of the day, if you think the coolest sculpts in the set are boring to look at, what are we even doing? So yeah, showcase the cool stuff on the box so people know what they want to get out of the box. Hmm. Right. JSA clicks on Twitter says, if it's just one or the other figures, even if one doesn't know the comic they're from, the significant appearance on the cards will help. 
So we, now we have one that's just saying, boom, just the figures. You know, that's the game. That's what I'm selling. You know, so why not put the figures on it? I understand the box art that looks nice to grab attention, but like, boom, you're selling figures. Let me see the figures. So I see, I can see that point. It'd also be cool, and this is like a side thing. Um, since they no longer put on the back of the cards like the little story blurb of like what that character you know it's like yeah, Iron Man like, like, like what he's been up to and like why this is the type of Iron Man that you're playing it'd be kind of cool if they put like a little blurb on the box where it's like the like House of X Powers of X series you know like uh, Jonathan Hickman has like started this thing where you know xavier is resurrecting x-men like you know just like some some blurb on like the side of the box to like clue you in if you do read comics but you don't play the game and then you might be like oh yeah like i'll pick up weird never dead x-men set uh yeah Razukio Feng on Facebook says, I really enjoy the box art most of the time to help hype up the theme of the set. I feel putting pictures of the figures on the box just makes the box look kind of boring since nowadays we already know what's in the sets coming out. Hmm. Okay. Uh, the one I do want to read, uh, last one on Twitter, is from Ray W. I would not like to see art of characters not in the set. That one, I think we can all get behind. It really bothered me. I think the biggest one was like ADW and they had like Namor and a few other people like on the box art that like weren't in the set. You know, right. like that does bother me. Like that is in a way false advertising. Well, and um, I believe in the that. Captain America set, they had Bucky Cap on, I think something somewhere on the booster. And it's oh, like that. Yeah. Nope, not in the set, you know? Um, yeah. To a lesser extent, ABPI had most of the Illuminati on the like front box. Yeah, but of course they couldn't mix like X Men, and they didn't have Mister Fantastic, and so like there was like some of the uh, actual like Illuminati members just like straight up missing from the image. So like should have clued you in that they weren't going to be in the set, but like it was clearly a image of the Illuminati that they had just like cropped out some of the members. Right. And so it was like, Oh, but like maybe, and then it was like, Nope, no, not in there. And then, uh, last we'll do on Facebook. I'm going to go with Tyler Murin who says, I got to go with art helps to imply the design space of the set. Plus, as long as we still get previews, then I'll see the figures there. Good art is an added bonus to display with the figures. Okay. That would right be kind of cool too if they did like uh the three sides of like the box, like left like the back of the box with like writing and like information and stuff and then they made the three sides in the front or like the two sides in the front um kind of like a splash effect where if you like unfolded the box it was like a backdrop similar to like the Galactus backdrop or like the mm. Tri Sentinel thing. Okay, yeah. No, right on. I can see that. I could see it. Moving on, finish up the episode. We're going to go into a Jedi Legend Hero Clicks tip of the week. You don't want to sell me death sticks. I don't want to sell you death sticks. You want to go home and rethink your life. I want to go home and rethink my life. Halloween weekend. As recording this, sadly, it is November 1st, but uh, it is it's Halloween enough. So let's go into some fun Halloween theme stuff you can play. So Back from the Dead. Playtime one hour. This is definitely something that should be timed. Uh, one KO to turn to the last click and uh, keep playing. The points rack up quick. So it's kind of like a go crazy, go nuts, kill as much stuff as possible, which is pretty cool. Or vampire mode. When hit, uh, that character gains plus one to stats and they have steel energy and stealth. Or everybody gets pumpkin bombs, which is kind of cool. I, I could dig that. Like it's kind of like a snowball event where everybody gets in cap or something like that. But instead everybody gets pumpkin bombs. I think that might be my favorite one, you know, like I think that's really cool. So sweet. I, I do really dig uh, Halloween themed events for sure. So definitely check that out. So if you're thinking about running some cool Halloween events um, or just like something fun for your play group, your round table, definitely check out some of those scenarios guys. For next All right. Year, so I mean, that brings because you're too late for next year. year. <laughs> yeah. It's November too 1st. late, too slow. And by too the time slow, you should have listened to the podcast in the past with your future time travel machine, idiots. What yeah. are you doing? What are you yeah. doing? You didn't use your time travel machine to somehow rip this from the future last week and then understand what was going on. 
we just spell it out for you guys? <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? Too slow, Barry. Too slow, Barry Allen. You're not fast enough. It you ain't me, fast Barry. enough. I was the one that made your hero clicks more expensive. Me. All right. Well, that will wrap up the episode this week. I want to shout out a few things, guys. Uh, we are doing a Patreon giveaway. As of right now, it is too late, but we're giving away some super rares and some super rare primes. You know, which is really cool. So if you want to get in on some giveaways as well as awesome tokens like our Howdy Howdy, let's get rowdy tokens and our uh, our stickers, our Dial H stickers, you want to slap that on your clicks box. We don't have a lot of use for stickers and tokens right now, unless of course you are playing real events, which is really sweet. Uh, I also want to make some more tokens besides the Lex Luthor 40 Kex tokens, the Dial H tokens and the HBK tuning of the band tokens. So if you guys have any tokens you want to see made, I could whip them up for you. Uh, and as, as well, if you just want to straight up buy those tokens and support the podcast, uh, $10 will get you three of them. That's what our uh, Patreon thing is. So $10 for three. Uh, if you want to get six, I can probably try to cut you a deal. So you're not paying, you know, $20 for six tokens. So just let me know, email the page, send me a message, whatever. So check out our Patreon if you want to support us. It, it helps us keep the show running since it does cost $25 a month. And it also helps us make more fun and creative YouTube videos if you guys enjoyed the wwe hero clicks extreme rules where me and simeon play a real life game of hero clicks in real time as well as do challenges based off all the characters in the wwe set we hit each other with chairs we sadly do food challenges <laughs> which uh are fun as we mentioned before fun being a loose term i guess um as well as you want to see us in pain or just want to see your goofy hosts with a uh, happy little hero clicks guest uh cinematographer for the day it was really it was really fun we had a lot of fun making it so i would definitely want to see more people watch that also on our patreon you can see bloopers and behind the scenes uh like the making of how i made the dial h for hero clicks championship belt as well as you'll be able to see the bells i believe they're called bells or side plates that i would have gotten if i would have won versus the ones you only see in the video which are the ones simeon has because i won so take, check out extreme rules yes sadly you did win uh so check out extreme rules on our youtube channel also check out thursday throwdown on the dial h for hero clicks youtube channel every thursday we have been going through sets since the dawn of hero clicks so we started at infinity challenge and now we have worked our way up to superman and wonder woman versus world's finest so make sure you go on either our facebook our twitter our discord for your patreon member or the comment section of that thursday throwdown and tell us what figures you want us to play in next week's thursday throwdown you get to tell us what we play so if you have a figure that you're nostalgic for in that set or if you just go back and look at the set and be like hey this is a cool figure go ahead type it in the comments and let us know uh also me and simeon will cosplay one random character we use in that set so if you want to like kind of make the votes some really wacky hard to do characters and these are like closet cosplays like these are some uh some they ain't very professionally done folks these are like plays these take us about an hour to two hours to come up with the idea and the random junk clothing we have i shouldn't call it junk clothing but random clothes we've accumulated (laughs) through the years and like lots of duct tape to like make a costume then it's really fun we we got to be very creative in Thursday Throwdown. We also use Tabletop Simulator if you wanted to see how playing online HeroClix works using Tabletop Simulator. So check out those. That is all I'm going to plug this week. Simeon, uh, go ahead, say whatever you want to before we close the show. Yeah, I just want to also mention that uh, I try and usually make my cosplay my MVP, the most like valuable click that I played, um, which would be an MVC technically, but uh, to say, it doesn't yeah. always work out that way because some things are just impossible for me to do. I could not make a Hulkbuster Mark II suit of armor for a thumbnail um, for this last video. So that was, even though that might have been my MVP, that was, uh, it had to be given to someone else that was more realistic for me to pull off. Um, but with that, if you ever watch the Thursday Throwdown videos and you want to you wanna pick up some of those figures, and you think, where can I get those figures? Well, you can get those figures at CoolStuffInc.com. We're sponsored by CoolStuffInc.com. And if you go there, you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Heroclix singles and sealed products. So check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. And as always, guys, remember the immortal words of Miguel O'Hara, Spider-Man 1776. We shall not allow the British to rule us. Happy trails.